The Babylon 5 TV series reviewed in this video was created by J. Michael Trzynski and is owned by Warner Brothers Studios. I made this video as spoiler free as I could, but be warned that there are some spoilers ahead. The creator of Babylon 5, J. Michael Straczynski, planned and wrote out the entire show before a single episode aired. Naturally, adjustments were made along the way, but the core story was there from the beginning. I'd like to start this video by relaying how this particular aspect of the show influenced me in my own creative work. When I first started writing, I would just sit down and start working on the manuscript with no prior preparation whatsoever. This caused quite a few inconsistencies in underdeveloped characters, which in turn prevented a book's completion because these problems felt like an insurmountable task. Then I had the idea for the Star Chronicles, and I knew I needed to get it right from the beginning. I thought about Babylon 5 and what its creator had done that made it so special to me, and the immense preparation he had done came to mind. As a result, I sat down and wrote outlines for each book in the series, along with detailed notes on the civilizations found within. And now I have books I can feel confident about. Now, on to the analysis of the show. The Babylon Project was a dream given form. Its goal, to prevent another war by creating a place where humans and aliens could work out their differences peacefully. Many have said the first season leans towards the slow and boring, and they struggle to get through it, but I have never had this problem. It focuses on setting the stage for the viewer by presenting the various aspects of its world. An example of this is a battle between two alien races, Narn and Centauri, in the first episode. It is revealed that these two have hated each other for over a century and will stop at nothing to destroy the other. This conflict is integral to the storyline as a whole and is manipulated by other powers in their own quest for superiority. The rest of the major plot elements are only hinted at in this season, but it does a lot to show how each race operates and interacts with the others. It may seem slow, but patience pays off in the end. This is the story of the last of the Babylon stations. The year is 2259. The name of the place is Babylon 5. A huge twist starts off season 2 with the replacement of a major character, the station's commander. Commander Sinclair, played by Michael O'Hare, is reassigned and Captain Sheridan, played by Bruce Boxleitner, is brought in to replace him. I may discuss the real world causes for this in another video, but they are too complex to get into this time. The season sees an increase in the action as tensions escalate between the Centauri and Narns, eventually resulting in war between the two. There are also moments of tension between the humans and Minbari largely due to Sheridan's status as a war hero in a conflict between the two races ten years prior. We also learn that something is going horribly wrong on Earth, and the characters start to take action against it. They risk their careers, freedom, and even their lives in the effort to preserve all that they believe in. Meanwhile, there are increased rumors of a new race at work behind the scenes, and we learn more about the mysterious Vorlons. Nothing is as it appears with these two. The pieces set up in Season 1 are falling into place, but it is only getting warmed up. The Babylon Project was our last best hope for peace. It failed, but in the year of the Shadow War, it became something greater. Our last best hope for victory. This is the season where it all comes together. All the hints, subtleties, and stage setting come together to reveal a world hidden beneath the one we've come to know. Of course, new mysteries and intrigues take their place. Our heroes are unable to stop the progression of evil on Earth, and the President and Axis plan to seize absolute power. They hope to ride this out until things settle down, but are inevitably forced to take a stand. Their beliefs in the tenets and principles of the nation they have sworn to serve force them to leave that nation and continue on their own. This choice isn't easy, and many lives are lost because of it, but doing the right thing is rarely easy. We, the audience, have known about the shadows for some time now, but they have remained largely hidden within the show's universe. They're not hiding anymore. Their true power is revealed as they begin openly attacking the other races, and it seems no one can stop them. 
Sheridan is able to get to Vorlon's help in creating an alliance capable of stopping the shadows, but at great cost. Meanwhile, life goes on, and the characters find themselves dealing with a variety of situations from the mundane to the life altering. And it's not over yet. It was a year everything changed. The year is 2261. The place, Babylon 5. In the words of Commander Susan Ivanova, sometimes peace is another word for surrender. We may desire peace, but if we believe in something, there will come a time when we must fight for it or give it up. In the fourth season of Babylon 5, they most certainly fight and fight hard. There is the conclusion of the Shadow War and two civil wars, and there are always the hints of even more to come. This is an example of why I enjoy this show so much, and that is the concept of a huge world extending far beyond any one person's perspective or lifetime. Most events will get concluded by the end of the series, but it remains clear that their effects will never go away and will influence the next chain of events in that world. Victory comes at great cost, and this season doesn't end without enormous sacrifice. Exactly what he appears. Nothing's the same anymore. Commander Sinclair is being reassigned. Why don't you eliminate the entire non holy race? Why are we going to have reaching out of the stuff? Who are you? President Clark has signed a decree today declaring These martial orders law. have forced us to declare independence. That's why people get off their encounter suited butts and do something. You are the one who will die. Do the do who will die. Why are you here? Do you have anything worth living for? Think of my beautiful city. Giants in the playground. Get the hell out of our galaxy! We are here to place President Clark under arrest. It has been a long, hard struggle, but things are finally looking up. The shadows are gone, Earth is free, and a new multi-species alliance promises to create and maintain peace. But it isn't long before everything starts to fall apart again. Sheridan is now the president of the Interstellar Alliance from where he hopes to create a new era of peace and cooperation, but he finds that overcoming centuries of self-serving governments will not happen quickly. His allies may agree with and to his ideals on the surface, but behind the scenes they continue to operate the same as before. While the shadows may be gone, their legacy isn't. Their allies seek to continue their work, starting with the destruction of the Interstellar Alliance. This results in another war this time between the Alliance and the Centauri. The season, and the series, ends with peace in the galaxy, but always with the threat of further conflict and the hope for a better future. I hope you enjoyed this analysis of the Babylon 5 technique as telling one story over multiple seasons. If you did, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe. I'm also leaving links to my Facebook and Patreon pages in the description where you can stay updated on all my work. Let's seize the future, together.